Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, wreckage of Transair 810 recovered. Also, Tamrak denies NTSB blame and Crew 2 return to Earth is delayed. Thank you for joining us this Monday. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. The NTSB has successfully completed the recovery of Transair Flight 810 this week. They retrieved the remains of the Boeing 737-200 that ditched after the flight crew reported anomalies in both engines shortly after takeoff from Honolulu on July 2, 2021. The only occupants of the aircraft, the two pilots, survived. After ditching the majority of the plane's wreckage, came to a rest about 400 feet deep. Flight 810 had been carrying cargo at the time, so Transair worked with its insurance provider to recover the wreckage and salvage as much cargo as possible. The key recovery vehicle was the Eclipse Group's Bolt Horizon, an underwater research ship equipped with a remotely operated scout vehicle and underwater retrieval equipment. The barge Salta Verde was brought on station to receive the fuselage sections and ferry them to Honolulu for further study. The retrieval operation took multiple trips, with the engines and the front landing gear first recovered, then the forward fuselage section, consisting of a 37-foot span that weighed about 15,000 pounds. The final piece of the aft section was a demanding retrieval, weighing about 48,500 pounds empty. When the remote vehicle explored the interior, it found the aircraft remains still loaded with cargo, bringing the total weight closer to 60,500 pounds. After the break, sun and fun holiday fly-in tickets are available. More news after these messages. I believe that if people use the landing doctor training program, they will have less accidents and eventually their insurance will go down and they will make a superior pilot. We do personal limitation checklists, which is the most important reason you need to fly with limits. We do ground proximity awareness training, and we do this with a crosswind. We've been operating six Bristels for two years without one insurance claim. The Landing Doctor program is working, and you're gonna hear more about it. The Zephyr is what you have always wanted. A highly capable two-seat turbine-powered helicopter with great ramp appeal. 100 mile per hour cruise speed, 172 nautical mile range, and to top it all off, a first of its kind emergency airframe parachute system, the Curdy Design Zephyr. Unique, advanced, innovative, and highly capable. Your ultimate freedom machine is available now at zephyr.eu. Welcome back with so much news coming out of the aviation industry. We're going to be summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Sun and Fun holiday fly-in tickets are available. Sun and Fun has the perfect getaway for a weekend in sunny Lakeland, Florida. Their holiday fly-in drive-in festival has opened sales for tickets and registrations for campgrounds, parking spots, and VIP admissions. No Sun and Fun event would be complete without the Stoll competition, with qualifiers taking place on Friday before the finals on Saturday. The festival starts on Friday, December 4th at ACES Campus. Commemorative Air Force P-51 suffers runway excursion. On November 4th, a commemorative Air Force P-51 Mustang on tour with a Tuskegee Airmen exhibit ran off the runway at Tallahassee International Airport in Florida. According to reports, after the incident, the Mustang had been in the landing roll when it strayed into the grass. Tallahassee Deputy Director of Aviation Jim Derwin said the pilot was uninjured and no fire or fuel leaks occurred following the impact. He said it basically went off the runway and came to a rest on the side of the runway. Lightspeed adds compact survival kit. 
Lightspeed Aviation has released their Aviation Survival Gear Kit, designed by pilots to maximize capability in a lightweight footprint. Lightspeed aims to simplify survival requisitions for owners and pilots who want to spend more time flying and less time researching equipment to assemble a kit from scratch. They created a small canvas tote with external mole webbing, external hook velcro for patches, and straps for easy carry. Weighing in at about 10 ounces, the bag measures 8 by 4 by 6 compact enough for stowage in most GA craft. King Schools announces winner of Martha Scholarship. Sarah Tamar, a caravan seaplane pilot for Tailwing Air in New York City, is the sixth annual recipient of the WAI Martha King Scholarship for Female Flight Instructors. Prior to winning, she worked at an advertising job by New York's East River, watching float planes come and go. She felt a calling then, saying, I didn't know I was meant to fly. I didn't know I had the potential to become a pilot. I didn't know flying seaplanes for a living would become my life's purpose. Well, that does it for today's trip around the patch. Now, as we turn to the rest of the news, Tamarack denies NTSB blame. Tamarack has disputed the findings of probable cause in the NTSB's final report of a 2018 crash of Cessna Citation N525EG. The board faulted Tamarack's active winglet system, alleging that the crash was a result of an asymmetric deployment of the left wing load alleviation system for undetermined reasons. Tamarack states that forensic evidence collected in the course of the investigation proved that the load alleviation was indeed functioning correctly and deploying symmetrically upon impact. Additionally, the company points out a number of inconsistencies and omissions in the official report. First, they note that the NTSB's final report rule states the aircraft was rolling at 5 degrees per second when the autopilot automatically disconnected at 30 degrees of bank, not as functioning citation autopilot would at 45 degrees of bank or 10 degrees per second. They note the failure of the investigation to account for the premature autopilot disconnect and inappropriate automated response for an extensive bank condition. Tamarack notes their full cooperation throughout the investigation but says the NTSB published a revised factual report in the final report without taking into consideration alternative causes. After these messages, crew to return to Earth is delayed. I'll explain why after the break. Pilot Communications USA is proud to introduce our latest headsets, the Carbon A1 Active Noise Reduction and the Carbon P1 Passive Headset. Carbon fiber makes our headsets 30% lighter than others, which significantly reduces pilot fatigue. Our Blue Link hand control unit allows you to connect two devices at the same time, and the record out capability can send audio to an onboard camera or digital recorder. Get the headset that's so light you may forget you're wearing one at pilot-usa.com. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. When adventure is calling, the Bori by Aero Volga is the plane you need to answer the call. Bori's composite design is simple, reliable, and economical with impressive performance and no gimmicks. Designed for the wilderness and proven durability in a flight around the Arctic Circle, the Bori has what it takes to handle your next adventure. Featuring two large cargo compartments, a comfortable modern cockpit, and a Rotax 912 power plant, the Bori Amphibian is now available in Canada. Experience the Bori for yourself at FlightSimple.com. Welcome back. NASA's SpaceX Crew-2 mission now is targeting a return to Earth around 10.30 on Monday, November 8th, with a splashdown off the coast of Florida. The Crew Dragon spacecraft, named Endeavour, is scheduled to undock from the International Space Station at 2 p.m. on Monday, November 8th, to begin the journey home. Mission teams decided to adjust the Sunday, November 7th schedule and docking following a planned weather review showing high winds unfavorable for recovery near the splashdown zone in the Gulf of Mexico. The spacecraft will also return to Earth with about 530 pounds of hardware and scientific investigations. Endeavour will undock autonomously and perform a fly-around maneuver to photograph the exterior of the International Space Station. Once the maneuver is completed, the Crew Dragon spacecraft will aim for a splashdown at one of seven targeted landing zones in the Atlantic Ocean or Gulf of Mexico. 
With Crew 2 splashed down on Monday, November 8th, NASA SpaceX Crew 3 mission is targeting launch no later than 9 p.m. on Wednesday, November 10th, on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. That does it for our show today. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. You can catch episodes of Airborne on Roku and Fire TV. Just search for Air News or Airborne in the directory. And don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.